Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to start today's webinar by going over the clear defined responsibilities of the lab director, um, as this is important to understanding what the lab director actually needs to do and if they're actually doing their job. So CLEA breaks down the responsibilities of the lab director into five categories listed here, the general, procedural, personnel management, proficiency testing, quality control, and quality assurance. So we'll be going in more depth into each of these um, topics, but I wanted to note here that some accreditation agencies such as CAP and COLA and individual states may have additional responsibilities that aren't covered in the scope of this webinar. Um, today, I'm really only focusing what is set forth by CLIA. Under the general responsibilities category, CLIA requires that the lab director be accessible to all laboratory staff. Many lab directors work remotely, so this is uh, this accessibility is usually via phone or email. Again, CLIA does not have a specific requirement for the lab director being physically on site at the laboratory, but this may vary by accreditation agency or state. The lab director is also responsible for ensuring environmental conditions and that these are appropriate for testing. Um, this really covers two separate requirements, with the first being general safety. It's important that there is adequate space and ventilation and that safety precautions are in place so that laboratory personnel can perform their jobs with minimal risk. The second part of this is the environmental conditions uh, are required for meeting the operating parameters for instruments used within the laboratory. At bare minimum, this includes temperature and humidity checks. Ultimately, the lab director is responsible for the overall administration and operation of the laboratory. The lab director will often be called in to consult and advise on issues dealing with staffing, how to handle increased testing volumes uh, while maintaining defined turnaround times, and keeping in mind the overall financial goals of the laboratory. Uh, before going into the more specialized responsibility, uh, responsibilities of the lab director. I'd like to note here that the lab director can actually delegate some of their duties to other lab personnel, uh, which brings us to the duties that can and can't be delegated per CLIA. The lab director cannot delegate quality or safety of the laboratory. The lab director is responsible for making sure their own duties are performed and that the lab is only performing testing within the scope of their complexity designation. Uh, the lab director is responsible uh, for the overall quality of the laboratory. And so even if a duty is delegated, it is ultimately up to the lab director to see that it is completed. As I cover the rest of these CLIA defined responsibilities, those that can be delegated will be emphasized with an asterisk. The procedural responsibilities of the lab director focus mainly on the actual testing performed at the laboratory. Um, the overall quality of the lab covers the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical phases of testing. And one of the common ways a lab director will work to ensure quality uh, is by developing a standardized operating procedures that cover um, all of these phases. These SOPs, as they are commonly referred to, are housed in a procedure manual that is readily available to all lab staff, and these set the expectations for how duties should be performed. A large portion of the procedural responsibilities are to make sure that the test methods used in the laboratory can provide accurate results. The first step in this process is either the verification or validation of the methods performed in the laboratory prior to patient testing. In addition, accuracy can be assessed throughout the year by proficiency testing, calibration verification if ap applicable, and inter-instrument studies if the laboratory is using more than one of the same instrument for the same test. Finally, the lab director will have to check that the patient report includes all pertinent information a physician would need to interpret results provided. Uh, this can include reference ranges or for qualitative testing, you will often see cutoffs for positivity. Uh, typically, uh, this is performed by review of a finalized test report prior to the lab going live with testing. So under the umbrella of personnel management, the lab director works to employ a sufficient number of staff at bare minimum, um, the lab director needs to make sure that the laboratory covers all minimum required CLIA roles. This includes a clinical consultant, technical supervisor, or technical consultant, depending on the complexity uh, designation of the laboratory, general supervisor, and testing personnel. Considerations for appropriate staffing um, should also include the test volume and expected turnaround times. During the hiring process, credentials should be reviewed so that all employees meet CLIA educational and experience requirements for their specified roles. 
uh, once hired, the lab director will be responsible for training of the individual, although this is a common area that is often delegated to either the technical or general supervisor. After the initial training of testing personnel, uh, competency checks are performed at the six month annual and annually thereafter. Uh, again, I wanna highlight that performing the competencies can be delegated, but ultimately it, the lab director is responsible for making sure that these are completed in a timely manner. Finally, the lab director defines the roles and responsibilities of the lab personnel and maintains written record of this. And this is especially important if the lab director does end up delegating duties to other lab staff. These responsibilities are often outlined in a job description that is signed by the employee and filed in the laboratory. As previously mentioned, proficiency testing is one of the ways to ensure accuracy of results produced by the laboratory and is a requirement for CLIA and accreditation agencies. The lab director is responsible for enrolling the laboratory in an HHS approved PT program that is, approved, that is appropriate for the lab's test menu um, and for any analytes that may not be covered by uh, commercially available PT programs, alternative assessment is often required. For all proficiency testing samples, the lab director ensures that they are tested in the same manner as patient samples, that they are not referred to another laboratory, and that results are not discussed prior to evaluation. The lab director will also need to coordinate with lab staff to ensure that the proficiency testing results are submitted in a timely manner. Once the evaluation of results is received from the proficiency testing provider, the lab director should review all results and perform any necessary corrective and preventative action for any analytes that are considered unsatisfactory. Oftentimes this will require the involvement of the technical and general supervisor and the person who actually performed testing on the proficiency testing samples to determine the root cause of failure. Finally, uh, CLIA requires that the lab director develops a quality system consisting of both a quality control and quality assurance program. Um, together, these are used to identify any failures in quality as they occur. For the QC program, it's important that the lab director uh, defines the type of QC to be used and how often QC, QC should be performed in the laboratory. Uh, again, this is going to vary based on the testing performed by the laboratory. So while QC is used to maintain quality on a day-to-day -day basis, the QA program is meant to provide an overarching approach to maintaining quality. And this touches all aspects of testing. Um, so the pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical phases. And the QA program provides a way to review and revise how these phases are performed when issues arise. Along with this, the lab director must maintain acceptable levels of analytical performance. And as I previously discussed, this is done through the initial method verification or validation um, and semi-annual checks, which include proficiency testing at minimum. Uh, it's important for the lab director to make it clear to all lab staff that patient results can only be reported when the test system is in check. And one of the easiest ways of making sure this is the case is through running uh, QC prior to any patient samples. If QC fails, this is a pretty good indicator that there is an issue with the system that needs to be addressed. Finally, in instances where there is a quality failure, the lab director will initiate corrective and preventive action processes. This involves first, the identification of the root cause of failure. Secondly, a plan for correcting the failure um, and any nece necessary actions that need to take place. And finally, a way to assess if the actions implemented actually prevented the failure from happening again.